Hey guys, it's Clovis, and today we are going to learn how to defeat Keith in three, or slightly more, turns. Of course, as usual, most duelists, we need Dimension Ore to achieve this, and pretty much what you saw in the start of the video is the strategy. So, ultimately we open up with the Dimension Hole, and then when we activate it, we play the highest attack card on Wasteland and attack him. If you do the standard, for example playing the highest attack Wasteland card possible, he'll move to the right and defend with the card he plays to his left, in which you have to attack over this, and then attack him directly with a card that you've played on the following turn. Hopefully you can deal 4k damage to him inclusively on that, and hopefully he doesn't play anything that's strong enough to beat you, because that could be a bit of trouble. So if we don't have Dimension Hole, we open by moving forward, playing top left, and then we flip this monster up and launch it forward. Now this seems really risky, it is because if he can beat your card he actually will play in front and destroy it, but we're hoping that he doesn't in this strategy, that is really part of the risk of this run. So the reason why we need to launch it right now is that we want to set ourselves up for the turn after, where we can now move that first monster to the right and then forward so it's in front of his deck leader, and then we move back to our deck leader, and then we play another monster to our top left, and then move it forward. Now the reason for this is he will actually now move to the left instead of the right, and because he has a bias to play cards to his left, he will now play cards out of the way of your monster. So you can attack him with that first monster you played, as he can only move one tile, and because his deck leader was one tile away from you, it's now two, but your card's powered on Wasteland, so it can move two tiles and attack him directly. Now of course, you don't even need to move anything else, he will move to the left again on the next turn, and then play out of the way, which will be his top left. And you get to see this really funny thing where he moves his own card over one of his own cards. Uh, you don't really see the AI do this very often, but Keith's just weird like that. And then, you can follow up attack, and it should be lethal at this point. If it's not, it is a bit concerning, and again there are backups, for example, moving your deck leader to the right, playing a monster to the right, and then he can challenge this monster instead of the first card that you played, but overall this strategy is gearing ourselves up to defeat him quickly in four turns. Now we do have a slow safe option, for example we have one on Manawadan Fableur, not a lot of duelists have this, but this guy we can perform a slow and safe sandwich strategy. So how we do this is actually, let's say we have something relatively weak or we're not really confident we're going to beat his monster, or we just want to play it really 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 safe, we open with the card on the normal spot, however we don't flip it up, we just move it forward one tile and then pass. Leave it face down, and now what we want to do is play the highest attack possible card on our top right, and make sure that that's on the right side of the labyrinth in the middle. Now we move our deck leader right on the third turn and pass, I mean you can check what's in your hand, but we're preparing for the fourth turn where the two monsters we have on the field, we can flip them up and move them forward, and then all we need to do is make sure that when we play a monster in the middle, we move it forward one tile, you can attack him directly if you want, but if you attack into Invisible Wire it does end your run, pretty much. But if this monster we play in the middle is a lower attack, then the two monsters either side of it, he doesn't move out of the way, and because if you have a monster in front of his leader, whether you attack him directly and it's stuck there, or you just placed it there, he can't play anything in front of him, because that tile is occupied. So at this point, he will not move anywhere, he will just sit there and take direct attacks from you, and so you can actually capitalize off of this entirely, you can take as much time as you need to, or rush on the turn after if you are confident you can do 4k damage. And really, that's about as complex as it gets, it's actually really difficult for him to break this strategy up, Sandwich strategy can be done on a lot of duelists, and this is one example. Another one which we'll get to eventually later down the line is Lab Ruler. I'll talk about the benefits of that even more so. Uh, but for this example, the safest way to play this guy is by sandwiching him between two cards that have a higher attack than the card in front of him. And again, this card in front of him, it stops him from playing anywhere but to his left and to his right. And because he doesn't actually have any cards that go over Wasteland, if he plays to his right or to his left, those cards are completely out of the way and they're a non-factor. So you can attack, attack him with that middle card, 
And even if this is something that takes a few hits to kill him, remember, you can attack him and then the following turn attack him again with that card and then move your deck leader forward and then play top left and lethal him if you have the damage to do so. Otherwise, your best option is to just attack him three times with that card in the middle uh, or any other combination that leaves you to have 4k without him being able to move to the left or to the right because he doesn't want it to move into a spot where a monster with a high attack threatens a direct attack on him because it's two tiles away even though your monster can't attack through Labyrinth. They just assume that it can. So yeah. Now there is also a Labyrinth strategy by the way. This is very risky. I didn't really cover it too much here in depth because I actually have not used this strategy in a long time. Uh, I prefer not to because it's actually very risky. For example, if you're launching a Lab Breaker on your first turn, unless you have a Mega Morph with it, it's quite likely he's going to destroy it. Whether it's on his first turn or second turn, it's very risky. So it's up to you if you want to go for this or not, but basically you want to launch it so that it's to the right of his deck leader on the second turn, and that will force him to move forward. Now, unless you have a second Lab Breaker follow-up, I'm not 100% sure how to connect this in a meaningful way. You could move your first turn Lab Breaker down and to the right and attack him, and that should force him to move forward. Uh, move your deck leader around the middle tile, and you should be able to attack him again after this, but you will need to find 4k damage. In this footage, I use the second Lab Breaker to cut through the middle and 3-turn him. I'm not sure if you can actually 3-turn him without doing this. Um, it might still contribute to a 4-turn but if you have anything strong, like for example, if you have a dragon, a metal dragon fusion uh, on your first turn, you might want to play that. It's a bit more likely to destroy him uh, consistently. If he can answer the call of your high attack monster and he destroys it, that is quite bad. It's very risky. Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. I do heavily appreciate it and I hope these videos have been enjoyable. I know some of them are a bit more interesting than others. I think this one's pretty interesting because you get to learn about the sandwich strategy and it's kind of funny when the AI just kind of have a card in front of them that's attacking there directly and then they just don't want to move or react and they just kind of sit there and take it. Uh, it is kind of funny because the AI, you know, they did try to program them to react to you but because they're so simple in nature and they react to you so consistently, you really can take advantage of this and again, you don't even need to be a speedrunner for this, you can do this in a casual playthrough. So um, yeah, I hope this was useful information to you. If you want to see a speedrun of this where I implement these strategies, hopefully correctly, check me out on Twitch, come say hi, and thank you guys very much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you all, and bye bye.